This room, the old Senate chamber, is where Daniel Webster spent nearly two decades of public service. One of the original artifacts of Daniel Webster, still here at the Capitol, is Webster's old Senate desk. That desk is no longer in this room, but it is still in use today in the current Senate chamber. By agreement, the senior senator from New Hampshire, the state of Daniel Webster's birth, is still allowed to use Daniel Webster's original desk. However, at the time Daniel Webster served in the Senate, his desk was found in this room. Interestingly, in the bottom of his desk, Webster took a pen knife and inscribed his name. And those who used his desk after him followed this precedent. Daniel Webster developed his love for pen knives at an early age. In fact, Master James Tappan, one of Daniel's first school teachers, told the story of how Daniel received his first pen knife. Daniel was always the brightest boy in the school. <laughs> He'd learn more in five minutes than another boy in five hours. One Saturday, I remember, I held up a handsome new jackknife to the scholars, and I said the boy who would commit to memory the greatest number of verses in the Bible by Monday morning should have it. Well, many of the boys did well, but when it came Daniel's turn to recite, I found that he had committed so much to memory that after hearing him repeat some 60 or 70 verses, I was obliged to give up. He telling me still that there were several chapters yet that he had learned. And Daniel got that jackknife. Daniel Webster learned early to love the Bible, and his love for that book never waned. In fact, on the 4th of July, 1851, the year before his death, he stood here outside the Capitol and delivered a speech on the occasion of the laying of the cornerstone for the Capitol for the additions that have now become the House and the Senate chambers. Man is not only an intellectual, but he's also a religious being, and his religious feelings and habits require cultivation. Let the religious element in man's nature be neglected, let him be influenced by no higher motives than low self-interest, and subjected to no stronger restraint than the limits of civil authority and he becomes the creature of selfish passion or blind fanaticism. The spectacle of a nation, France, powerful and enlightened, but without Christian faith, has been presented as a warning beacon for the nations. On the other hand, the cultivation of the religious sentiment represses licentiousness, incites to general benevolence, and the practical acknowledgement of the brotherhood of man, inspires respect for law and order, and gives strength to the whole social fabric. Daniel Webster did not believe that the public good would ever be served apart from Christianity. As he reminded one gathering, Whatever makes men good Christians makes them good citizens. Daniel Webster, one of the great leaders here in the Capitol, was outspoken about Christianity both in private and in public. <laughs>